Item, SCP-827. Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures. Site 827 has been established at the location of SCP-827's discovery. For the purposes of the Foundation, SCP-827 has been outfitted with a specialized cell reactor that allows for introduction of samples and removal of their products. Personnel actively interacting with SCP-827 are to wear full-level C or higher hazmat gear. Samples introduced into SCP-827 require approval of Project Director. Samples from only one individual at a time are to be introduced to ensure there is no genetic cross-contamination. All samples are to be screened for genetic chimerism. In the event that more than one distinct genetic sample is introduced to SCP-827, the sample is to be removed using Procedure 827 Harry and incinerated. Tissue from the central nervous system is not to be used in SCP-827 tests following Incident 827. Description. SCP-827 is a semi-solid mass of biologically active human stem cells. SCP-827 is capable of self-renewal and is totipotent, with cells replacing themselves at a rate of approximately 200,000 cycles of mitosis per day, with roughly the same amount dying off per day. At time of writing, SCP-827's mass is currently 353 kilograms, and remains stable. When a sample of human organ tissue is introduced to SCP-827's mass, it is broken down and assimilated into the mass using a unique enzyme. Following this, SCP-827 cells will enter an active state and will begin to generate copies of the organs from which the tissue originated. These organs, designated SCP-827-A, differ from their original purpose in drastic ways. Introduction of muscular tissue, for example, has resulted in full muscular systems developing and attempting to escape SCP-827, while introduction of a human jaw has resulted in what was termed a broken tooth tree, a plant-like structure with a trunk of muscular tissue with branches made from malformed jaws. Assuming that SCP-827-A instances are remaining and still in contact after a period of approximately 2-3 days, the instances will be digested and re-assimilated into SCP-827's mass. SCP-827 is only capable of assimilating human tissues. Attempts to introduce non-human tissues, including hair from lower primates and bone samples of extinct humanoids, has resulted in a deterioration of health in SCP-827. Furthermore, all liquid samples are rejected by SCP-827.